And I just want to know, have you lost your footing too? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the first ever album review that we're doing in this style of like a reaction. This is going to be similar if you watch my J. Cole 2014 Forest Hills Drive album review. This is going to be a very similar fashion. I would normally want to go song by song in terms of like every single song that's on the album have its own video. But the three that I've done so far for this album have been all of them have been blocked at one point. So I don't want to I don't want to put the effort into an every single video individually and then they get blocked or something happens to the channel, gets copyright striked. Fueled by Ramen is being extremely, extremely tight with their music, specifically 21 Pilots. So this is kind of like they're forcing my hand to do the album review like this, but it's also kind of cool because this is like, it means that I get to vibe with the entire album all at once. That's one of the only things that I don't like about being a reactor, reacting to new music, is that I can't vibe with the entire sound of the album. The album is curated in the way that it is for a reason. And if I want to do an individual songs that means I can't listen to it through and through in one sitting so I'm kind of glad that we get to do it here obviously in order to avoid blocking we're going to try to be like jumping around on the songs but I'm still going to give the same normal analysis that I would that means we're going to talk about lyrics we're going to talk about production we're going to talk about the whole thing so you know I'm, I'm super hyped everybody everybody was on stream last night and hyping it up because it came out at 11 central while I was streaming I'm like damn all right I'm excited and I was hoping everybody says that it's a new sound and it's similar to the three singles that they've released so far. I read like an interview that, that Tyler had did with uh, Apple Music and he said that the scaled and icy is a shorthand for scaled down and isolated because this album was written during quarantine. Now, whether or not that's like a double meaning, the, the scaled and isolated is just a straightforward meaning for the general public. But then there's obviously also deeper meaning. There's deeper meaning within the whole storyline of Trench. I honestly don't know. I'm expecting y'all to tell me in the comments what the situation is there. But I'm super excited for it. I haven't heard anything other than the individual singles, Choker, Shy Away, and and uh, Saturday, first track right here, we have Good Day. It sounds like an intro song, like we're, we're turning everything on. Yo, this song already, it sounds like if 21 Pilots and Billy Joel and they like got together and had a baby, like 80s Billy Joel, this is exactly what it, it would sound like. This is the sound that I was talking about the, the entire time. Like every time I like couldn't figure out the way that I think it sounds, it sounds like it sounds like Billy Joel, whatever genre he fit in in the 80s. And and uh, Eric, not Eric Clapton, who's the guy that's saying Rocket Man? Anyway, I don't know. I can't, I can't think of his name right now for some reason, but you know what I'm talking about. But it sounds like if those three got together and put their brainstormed ideas together, this is the song that it would uh, that would come out sounding like. But just the opening line, like, like who who thinks to say I can feel my saturation leaving me slowly like I can feel the vividness of my life I can feel the colors that make me happy I can, I can feel that fading out I can feel myself turning into black and white which normally is not anywhere near as lively of an image as, as something that's in color and he says would you say you depend on the weather my sunshine light like is your like does your mood depend on whatever's going on around you and that's why it says I know it might be hard to believe me if you're if your mood or if your attitude or if you're or if you're like Life is dependent on what's going on around you and everything's going around you bad then like I know it's hard to believe me but it's a good day you know the lyrics are just always so clever and so well written I love it yo ukulele you can hear it in the back <laughs> you can barely hear ukulele emo what do, what do they call it don't ever know when the next one will show it'll show oh. Yes. Today's a good day and you never know when the next one will show. So I'm going to sing my soul, bro. Like you don't know if you're getting it tomorrow. So so try to try to make the best out of today. Try not to let your surroundings affect you. Try not to let like like try not to let the clouds like affect you from shining your light. Because today is a good day. The fact that you're alive right now. You never know when the next one will show. Tomorrow could be shit or you could be dead, you know? So, it's so fun, it's so bright and uplifting, like the, the sound of the song, you know? So good, bro. All right, you know what's crazy about that track? First off, 
that's a solid opening track like that just the vibe of the opening track gets you ready for the vibe of the entire of the entire album it's very important that the opening track like sets that tone if i close my eyes right there i could see this song being on some movie of like a montage of somebody getting their life together perfect perfect opening track next up we got choker obviously we've already heard this one i don't bother anyone nervous when i stand dry ice in the sand oh no nobody's coming for me yo i love the way the drums come in right there so clean And then it goes in again. Oh, so fire. Yes, bro. The halftime when, when we're breaking down. So nice. Push it further in. Yo. So good, bro. The way he says, like, like a splinter. Like, it's, it's only scary when you're the one that's not doing it. Like, even when you're the one that's pulling it out, you could even sustain more pain and push it in further because you know what's coming or you know what to expect or you know that you're hurting yourself versus somebody else and you know your pain threshold and limit where somebody else doesn't. Yo, so clean. Oh, next up is Shy Away. See, this is why I, like, I wanted to do the album in order in one sitting so I can understand like where the vibes are going. Like the first one was very happy. The second one also still has like that happy vibe and, and like that relaxed type of sound, but it, but obviously Choker's lyrics are a little are a little deeper, you know? Let's play a little bit of Shy Away. I haven't heard it in probably like a week. Just that 80s like sound, bro. And it's, it's just so 80s. Manifest this ceiling when you shy away. Yo, so good. Can I love you? So good, bro. You manifest this ceiling when you shy away. Bro, it always gets me every time I hear it. Like you, you set your own bar. You set your own limit whenever you shy away and you're not willing to go out there and you're not willing to push your own limits. You're not willing to, to see past what you've already seen. So whenever you shy away because you're nervous of failure, or you shy away for, for whatever reason, you set this ceiling because the people who push forward and innovate through 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 potential failure, they, they are the ones that are limitless. It's the ones that are scared or fear rejection or fear of failure that you shy away from pushing forward and that shy away sets that plateau it sets that ceiling it's such a good line bro this whole song is crazy good take what you have <laughs> don't you shy away manifest the ceiling when you shy away It's the fact that like we're singing very lightly and then he like introduces like the like the scream in for a second and then he slowly builds up to it at the end of the track and then it ends up with like that that heavier screaming style of vocal that he does. Don't you shy away. So clean, bro. Just like and I love you. So good, bro. That track is so clean. And those three tracks back to back, like very, very 80s pop, 80s like soft rock pop. And then we went into Choker, which is like not typical, but like lyrical, lyrically wise, it's kind of typical 21 Pilots, like kind of talk. I don't, he's kind of talking about himself, but kind of you can relate it to your own self. But right here, he's like talking to us and it's much more positive. It's like you could be you, you could be you could be destined to do whatever you want. But the fact that you shy away, the fact that you don't like you're you're scared of commitment toward potential failure, you manifest this ceiling, bro. Such a good song. All right, next up we got the outside. Oh, that's a little funky right there. Oh, yo, this is clean right here. Oh. Bro, this, this one right here is crazy. <laughs> this is a crazy vibe. Oh, man. This one is already up there for my favorite on the album out of the ones that we've heard. This vibe is wild, bro. And the lyrics, they could be straightforward or cryptic. He says, I'm already bored. Pretty sure I've seen this one before. I got a long drive. I tape my eyes so I don't fall asleep again. It, it could just be literally as straightforward as that. Or he could be talking about bored with whatever circumstance in life he's in. Like it could just be him like being tired of being tired of being who he is or being tired of being tired of setting that ceiling when he when he shies away, you know? It's 
it's so dope. But the sound of the song is, the sound is crazy. Like kind of just like that monotone delivery because he's bored, you know, like, like it's, and it's not really singing. He's not hitting too many notes. It's just the same, the same note over and over. He kind of fluctuates a little bit, but it's not anything crazy. Yeah, this is tight. This is tight for sure. Oh. Bro, that you got it, or, and what did he say beginning? Up and down, they're not in, like that very, like that deeper pitch sound, that sets that whole little part off on, on you got it, and up and down, they're not in, like behind his vocal, that's fire, bro. The song is crazy. You, got it. you hear it like in the background, you got it. Oh, yeah, damn. This little, this little funky rhythm, bro, I'm, I'm telling you. This is heat. Am I on the outside? Like I'm no longer, I'm no longer an influence. My music no longer hits in the same way. So I'm still vibing to, I'm still vibing to who I am, but they've already moved past that. They'll know that they're no longer trying to take my vibes. I am a Megalodon, ocean's feeling like a pond, swimming like a beast on the Crazy. They're not in. <sighs> Bro. But the lyrics, he said, I'm a Megalodon, ocean's feeling like a pond because of how how big he is. I don't know if he's talking about himself, like in the game, like like in the music industry, because they are obviously worldwide phenoms. Bro, that that cogs that like, I'm, I'm a Megatron, like I'm the biggest out there and I'm stepping on all these little people, all these little acts or whatever, like they're cogs, but the cogs all got together and started a renaissance and switched it up on me like a cog, like literally a gear. One gear doesn't do anything, but after you put like gears together, now there's all this power behind it. There's number, there's, there's, there's power behind the masses, yo. Everybody, yeah, you hear that little intro? Oh, I thought I was gonna drop right there. Is that over? This has a lot of hip hop like mixed in it. You can hear it. Bro, so good. Like the way I the way I like heard the song and as it progressed, like he was talking about am I on the outside now? Like am I my popularity or or am I no longer in the cool kids club? It sounded more like there was a little timidness or nervousness that he's on the outside. But at the end of that track, he's like, I, I like being on the outside. I don't want to stay in my lane. We don't have a lane. If we gotta be on the outside, then I love it here. I'm we're just vibing. <laughs> Crazy track, bro. My favorite on the album, for sure, so far. The outside switched up the whole sound, so like it didn't get too repetitive with like that 80s, like I said, Billy Joel. So that 80s sound turned into more like, we're taking those elements and we're gonna switch it up on the outside and put more hip hop into it, put more rap style, and it sounds fresh and it sounds clean. Literally, it sounds clean. It's not too crazy heavy on instrumentation. We're gonna do the very basic with instrumentation, and then we're gonna put this vibe of lyrics and, and drum patterns on top. Fire. Next up, another track that we heard literally most recently, Saturday, and that's that that, that track, the outside and Saturday back to back, are fired. Yeah, yes sir. On a Wednesday, the guitar is just so funky, bro, in this track. It's the same feeling that I had whenever whenever I heard Level of Concern for the first time, and I think they catch me off guard because somebody pointed it out on the Level of Concern video that they don't really use electric guitar too much, and so the fact that it's being used on Level of Concern, and then here we have it in Saturday, so like prominent at the very beginning in the intro, it sounds so clean. I'm vibing so hard with the way this album sounds because this is exactly how I wanted it to sound when we were when we were trying to figure out what was coming, like with the singles, you know? Hey. And I just want to know, have you lost your footing too? So good. On a Wednesday, we might get loud. On a Friday, Ooh, that note. All right, that's enough of that song. We obviously heard it already. I just wanted to vibe. The Outside and Saturday back to back, crazy vibe. And next up, we got Never Take It. Where have I, where have I heard that double clap before? What song is that on? Oh, you know where it's from? It's from uh, Men in Black, the song with the the the, the soundtrack sound song. Will Smith rapped it. I can't believe that came to my mind from that. It's just a currency and nothing more. Oh. Keep the truth. Information is just a currency and nothing more, bro. 
that's that's a bar. You know why it's a bar? Because there is literally a there's literally a technological gap between the rich and the poor. Like statistically speaking, there's a technological gap. A lot of poor people, they don't have computers in their homes. They don't have Internet. The only access to Internet they have is through their cell phone. Whereas over here on this side, the richer side, they do have access to Internet and they have computers and they have like, you know, like nonstop, like nonstop access to, to information. So that like there's an informational gap. So it literally is it literally is a currency because the richer people generally have easier access to information. That's a bar, bro. Another bar, bro. Keep the truth in quotation because they be lying through their fake teeth, bro. Like make sure that you're citing and quoting the, the truth exactly as is, because if you're not, they're going to try to spin it. They're going to bend the truth as much as they can. So make sure it's in quotation, which means this is exactly how it was said. That's a dope line, too. Hey, super clean. Talk about it after the talk. All right, this seems like a good place to stop and talk about what I just heard. He said they're trying hard to weaponize you and I. That's that's what made me like, oh, oh sh that's a bar. They're trying to weaponize us against each other. So that way they form this divide because there's normally strength in numbers. So if they keep us divided, then we're not going to be as strong as we could be. And they're doing that with fake information. They're lying through their teeth to keep us divided. If you look at the news, if you look at anything, you would you could swear. You could swear that everybody is either far left or far right. And in actuality, most people are a little closer to the center. But whenever you constantly see it online, you constantly see people on that deep end. You're like, damn, well, this must be the way the entire right and left think. So now if I approach someone who has different views, I think that they're going to attack me for mine. You know, the summer I wash the tube, I saw <laughs> Yo. Bro, did you hear that bass line going? Doom, 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 doom. Like it went down with him. He's like, I, I watched, I picked, I, I was watching the tube and I couldn't take it anymore to the point where I had to teach myself guitar because I was getting bummed out or I was getting mad about what I was seeing on TV. What I, what I was seeing on TV and about teaching, learning guitar is that you better teach yourself because what they're showing on TV, if you only listen to, if you only listen to Fox News or you only listen to CNN, you're seeing one extreme half of a conversation. What I learned from both experiences is that you got to teach yourself. If you, if you want information, if you want to know something, you got to go out there and get it yourself. You can't rely on other people. Such a crazy line. Such a crazy song, actually. <laughs> so good, yo. I think we're just halfway done with the album with that track or Saturday. So far, I'm vibing heavy. So far, this is going to go up there against Trench as my favorite 21 Pilots album. If I had to like, if I had to make a decision today, like right now, I don't know which one I would pick currently. That, that's how that's how I'm vibing with the album. Next up, we got Mulberry Street. <laughs> Tell me that that piano like no like uh that piano plane right there doesn't sound like Benny and the Jets. Tell me it doesn't cuz that's that's what I'm getting the entire album is that is that genre of like 80s and what is it pop rock soft rock? I don't even know what you would call Elton John and I don't know what you would call Billy Idol but Billy Idol <laughs> Billy Joel. That's what I'm getting the entire time. Hey. Oh, yo, so solid. And I, so the lyrics, they sound like he's talking. They sound like he's talking in in the form of not depression or anxiety, but like it sounds like that. Like you can have the weekends. You can feel good on the weekends, but know that we live somewhere in between. You're like, they're, I'm not going away. Like, keep your sunny days. Leave us in the rain because that, that's when we shine is, is whenever whenever things aren't going as planned. And I don't know if that's the meaning of the song and or I, I like like this. It's cryptic. I mean, you could you could literally you can interpret it however you want. But that's how I'm interpreting it. Like all the negative feelings that he has inside. This is this is them talking on a track. Like keep your keep your weekends. It's fine. Keep your sunny days. But whenever it's our time to shine, we're coming out. You, you can never get rid of us. We're pushing sideways, 
synthetic high. Oh. They find someone to prescribe. Keep your best. He said, ain't no sunny skies until you finally realize that everybody relies on synthetic highs. They find someone to prescribe, yo. Oh my God, that's a bar. Synthetic highs? Like the highs in your life are fake. The highs in your life aren't actually, you're not, you don't enjoy them as much as you do. You've just been prescribed that through Instagram. Like you have, you feel the need to post. You feel the need to, you feel the need to be having this crazy exorbitant life. When, when those, when those things are synthetic highs, yo, the dopamine hit that you get from social media is the same dopamine hit that you get from doing drugs or that you get from gambling. That's why these things are all addictive and everybody relies on on synthetic highs because without that we would all be sad it all be it all be it all be rainy days all the time it, it's almost like he like you're convincing yourself that there's nothing wrong keep your bliss there's nothing wrong with this there's nothing wrong with the life we're living just you know we're fine if we're happy we're good like you're trying to convince yourself that's it's so dope Get out of our way. bro this album is this album is nice I'll listen for a song Ooh. Music heals the soul, bro. Ooh. You hear that? You hear the lower you hear the lower vocal underneath? Bro, I don't know what Mulberry Street is. I'm gonna need somebody in the comments to let me know because I don't know what that is or what he's talking about. Is that a key piece? Is that a key piece that I'm missing to understand the song completely? Because he's saying Mulberry Street, it's so good to see you. And I don't know what Mulberry Street is. So that track was clearly written an in inspiration from Elton John and Billy Joel. Even down to the way like the, the even down to the way the, the hook sounds or the chorus sounds, like the progression of the melody and the notes, it sounds like something either one of them would write this whole album sounds like that son like this is i wanted a lighter sound i wanted a sound that was similar to level of concern but i we can't get 12 tracks of level of concern you know what i'm saying so i appreciate and i like the way that this that the sound like keeps that same energy and keeps that same vibe and keeps that same like foundational structure of level of concern but then we go up and we get hip hop more we go down we get 80s pop more we go we're like we're floating around right in that core but let's keep it moving we're almost done we got we only got four more tracks right now we got formidable bro you ain't about to sit there you ain't about to sit there and tell me this doesn't sound like flock of seagulls or like depeche mode this, this sounds so it sounds so inspired by by that and then that's that's dope because I like Flock of Seagulls and I love Depeche Mode. You are formidable too. Maybe not even Depeche Mode and maybe not Flock of Seagulls, maybe even REM. But I just can't believe that I'm for you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I can't believe that I like like you're gonna see that I might be a little cynical towards you because I can't believe that I'm for you. Like there's no way. She gonna she gonna leave me for sure. Ain't no way. Why why is she with me? Out of all people. So it's like he's being cynical toward her when really he's just being cynical at himself, feeling like he's undeserving, you know? Just let me know. It might even sound like Morsi a little bit. Surprises. That's a nice line right there. So it's so nice. He said, you're so formidable to me because you seem to know like where you want to go. Like I don't have that structure in my life. Like you're formidable to me. Like like I I not necessarily fear. Uh, I guess fear. Like I have a I have a sense of like timidness because of how confident in yourself you are. I'm not confident in myself like that. So I might I might be cynical towards you a little bit because of your self-confidence. And it's not because you have it, it's because I don't, you know? It's fire. So good. Is he actually talking about his relationship with his now wife? 
How long have they been together? I don't know how long they've been together. Or is he talking about like family? Or is he talking about blurry face where he's like, you know me, you knew me better than I knew myself. And we're playing this out in reverse because it's like I'm the formidable one because of my music. And I seem and I'm, it seems like I'm grander than I actually am. And you know me like you, you actually know me through that. Like there's so much crypticness about who he could be talking about because it could be a it could be a metaphor. It could be exactly his wife or it could be his, his family and his parents or it could be actually something like related to Dima and the storyline, you know? You are formidable to me. I follow you. I'm just worried my loyalty will bore you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, I'm just worried that my loyalty will bore you, bro. Like, do you see like the level of, of I was going to say, do you see the level of concern? Do you see like the lack of self-confidence? Like normally you shouldn't be thinking that your loyalty to somebody or to a relationship is going to bore them because that should be what they're wanting. No one wants some kind of toxic ass relationship. Maybe he had gone through toxic relationship and he's like, my, my loyalty is going to bore you because I've gone through nonstop toxic relationships. So I'm putting that on you and thinking that you're that's all, you know, so my loyalty is going to sound it's going to be boring. It's not going to be as exciting or the ups and downs like they're very high of highs. They feel amazing. But then the low of lows don't. I'm right in the middle. We're just going to be riding it out together. You know, this song is up there right now on 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 the on the list if I had to put them in order on what I like and it might be because it sounds like Morrissey a little bit like that 80s type of like you know that that type of sound and it sounds like it more so and that's the type of 80s music that I like so I'm not sure yeah man that that song formidable that's exactly the vibe like out of all the songs that vibe right there is probably the closest to what to what I wanted all right but next up we got bounce man yeah Happy, bouncy, upbeat vibe on every song. We haven't really had a ballad, I don't think. So all your face on the nightly news. Bounce, 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 man. Come to the house, man. I let my old lady know. Uh -huh. You grown in a way, don't make you wrong. Ooh. Come to the house, man. We'll sing one more song. All right, so I don't know who he's talking about in this song. But I, I get it like you got you got to bounce like before you bounce before you dip out before you leave and bouncing and running away doesn't make you wrong that does running away is not is not that might be the that might be the noble and courageous thing to do facing your fears or facing whatever's in front of you if it, if it doesn't make sense why are you going to do it just be just a just a not hurt your pride sometimes the stronger thing to do is to run away but I don't know who he's talking about if they come knocking You must have crossed the lines. She's been crying, but I'll tell her you're fine. Don't you a couple bands and you had to Mexico. No way, don't make you wrong. We'll sing one more song. So long. Ah, uh, yo, this song right here, it feels real good, but the lyrics are making me sad, bro. The Wicked Witch of the East, bro. But for real, the lyrics are making me mad sad. Just that feeling of like, before you go, let's sing one last song. Like, I don't know who he's talking to. I don't know what this song is about. It's just the sadness that's getting me right now. Because I can, I can feel, if I look and I put this like on like I'm never I might not ever see this person again so before you bounce come over I'll let my old lady know we'll play one last song one last time and if you gotta go I understand you gotta go if I don't ever hear from you again I'll understand that you made it cross state lines I'll try to help you to get there it's just like it's making me sad thinking about it it's making me sad thinking about even just like someone moving on not necessarily out of your life because of you but just like the your lives are taking different paths so if you gotta bounce like I understand and I'm going to be supportive of that, even though there's that chance that I might not ever see you again. Like that is just it's sad, bro. I haven't felt necessarily emotionally moved by any of the songs right now. Like they're all feel good. You know, they're, they're, I, I like the sentiment of all of them. But this one right here, this is like the saddest song for me on the album so far. And what's crazy is that it doesn't sound sad at all. If any of these tracks was going to be a ballad, quote unquote, this is it without the ballad sound, you know? Just, I'll let my old lady know and we'll sing one more song and then we'll say so long. Bro, I'm like getting emotional right now. Next up, second to last song, No Chances. It's clean. Ooh, more now. This vibe after the song that we just heard. Ooh. God damn. This shit is hard duck. In my house shoes and a foot 
race in this house we are feng shui oh my god hold on this song is hard duh after all, we're second to last song and we're barely getting a song that sounds like this. This is the darkest sounding song on the album. And then we're, we're like, what, a line into it? Nah, we're a little bit deeper than that. But yo, that wow, like that, whatever that note is that's being played on the piano with the pitch bend, it's like way down in the yacht. Oh my God, it sounds so menacing. See like, and this is, and, and now this song, because it's darker, it makes me feel like this song might be part of the Dima storyline. It might be part of the Bishop storyline. When they come for you, you got no chances of escaping. I don't know. I don't know if it is or not, but the sound of the song, the sonics seem to fit the blurry line, the, the blurry face timeline more so than any other, the rest of the, the rest of the album. Got a good bass and a loose tongue, notorious in the octagon. Switch up in the sound. See, like, we got, we got people on the way. We want you in one piece. It sounds like it fits in the storyline. Like, he's trying to run away from Dima, and they got people, like, in the, what video was it? Was it Levitate? Or he, like, escaped from Dima, and then, like, he escaped with all the other people that are trying to escape, where we got people on the way to, to get you out of this situation, you know? And I could be completely wrong right now, to be honest. But I don't think I am. I'm not sure. Mm, look at that. Look how dark that. And I think the fact that it's like a lot of people chanting like, will we come for you? Like the fact that it's multiple people, I feel like that's the bishops talking. And I could be wrong, but that's probably why I feel the vibe that I do, that this is tied to the storyline. Because honestly, you have a very small chance of escaping from what I've seen so far in the storyline. Like it's hard to get out of Dima. So when he says we come for you, you have there's no chances. You have no chance of escaping. That's why I feel like it's as dark as it is, you know? How'd you get the location? Put together pieces, they say they sell the information. Grind surveillance is outside. We see when you arrive, ride to die, my son. Do you see why I'm saying like I feel like this is this is definitely the the song of the storyline? It just sounds like it. Like how did you get the location of Dima? How did you get did you put the pieces together through all of like the lore and and we found the location, not our lore, but like the lore and the storyline. We spent some time on the weekends grinding, surveilling like surveillances outside like trying to scope it out, you know? This song sounds completely different than the rest of the album. This feels like how lifted it sounded at the end of trench would leave this city like the lightness of the song you know like 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 that weight is being taken off of your back see how dark it gets when this part of the song comes on Ooh. Shit. God damn. that bitch was hard that <laughs> that drop was crazy the bridge was very light and like like literally the weight of whatever you're holding was lifted off of your shoulders so it feels like it almost feels like we're floating in like this dream space but then the we come from you no chances hits and then everything gets dark again and then after it like brr, like the very heavy ending outro like the last 10 seconds you know i and i'm sure y'all ain't no way you were ready for that song especially when you get the entire first like what is it 11 songs 10 songs they sound just like the like the light and the and the and the fun feeling of all the singles you were not expecting that as a track that was crazy super crazy that was, pfft, i don't even know what to say about that one we, we let's get to the last track redecorate that last song you know i like this little groove again leave this leave the city type vibe take an inventory of his life seeing snapshots chronologically in line Ooh. something told him he's made enough ah. cried looking at it from a new perspective never ask permission he just hopes that they forgive orders from the corner where that shadow lived bro like he just heard the orders and they they don't ask permission they could be talking about like in his mind like in the darkest deepest corners recesses of his mind where all the negativity sits he tried to look at things from a new perspective but the but he got the orders from the corner where that shadow always lived these last two songs already are way heavier than the rest of the album it feels like these last two songs it feels like they're gonna be the the jumping point for whatever the next album is to come you know it's like j cole on kod when he did 
did 1985 is the last song on the album, but that's technically the intro into the next album, The Fall Off. That's what I feel like right here. Like this is, these songs sound comp so different than the, uh, since the rest of the album that it's like, it's almost like everything that we had heard on the rest of the album was a facade. Like we're coming out of that dream that we were living and we're getting back into the darkness of the reality with these last two songs. Blankets over mirror to like to, to so that way she doesn't look at her reflection, not because she doesn't like the reflection, but because of what she sees behind it. And he's obviously talking about the room and the room is a metaphor. And should she clean or should she redecorate? And if she looks in the mirror, she's going to be she's going to be faced to to make a decision on that. So she would rather like out of sight, out of mind, you know, like ignorance is bliss type of thing. She covers all the dents with the way she decorates them. Mm. She got a call with no blankets on her bed. So she ripped them off the mirror, step back and she said, I don't wanna know like that. Bro, so, so heavy. So heavy. Haunted by a couple big mistakes. She hides the dents with the way that she decorates, like like the bruises and the scarring and her like emotional scarring and em emotional torment. All the bruises and all the things that you've been through, they can make they can have an effect on who you are. You're never gonna be that perfect, shiny, like round sphere. You're always gonna have dents from things that from things that had that had hurt you. You were wounded and then now it's healed with scars, but now you are imperfect. So she's haunted by those mistakes that had scarred her and she covers it up. And like I said, out of sight is out of mind until it was super, it was so cold one day that she had to remove the blankets and was faced with, with everything that she had been trying to hide from. So dope, yo. The melody of this song is crazy. So good, bro. Love that. Love that, like, that step down of the notes. With the bells and the whistles scaled back Ooh. like an isolated track, and he feels trapped when he's not inebriated. This is, like I said, these last two songs sound zero. Don't sound like anything that was on the rest of the album prior to these tracks. Like everything that I felt, the happiness, the lifted feeling of the, of the first 10 tracks have been completely taken away. It's almost to the point where like, it almost feels like the, the beginning feeling of the album didn't really even exist. And he said, with the bells and the whistles scaled back like an isolated track. And that's where the album title comes from, Scaled and Icy. He, like I said, that's what he said at the, in the interview, scaled back and isolated. And he feels like he's trapped when he's not inebriated, when really he's, he's being trapped by the need to, to, to be inebriated. You're trapping your mind when you can't, when you can't, think or function without being inebriated, you know what I'm saying? Fair to say he sedated most days of the week. He might have made it if he lived on a different street. And is this the street that we're talking about in the in the prior song, or what was it? Mulberry Street? Like, like, would his life be different had he not grown up in the area that he's grown up? Or had he not gone, and it might not be a physical location, if he had not gone through the emotional issues that he had gone through prior, that might be the, the, the metaphorical street he'd be a different person and not need to be inebriated so much, you know? Before you break and put your ear up to the door, tell me, can you hear him say it? I love that, yo. I Yo. So fire, bro. That made my people make this it. Like, that's, that's, that little melody right there is crazy. This one right here. Make my people make decisions, wondering what to do. That's fire. Or redecorate. Yo, the album. Okay. Those last two tracks, yo, I can't I can't say it enough how they're like, they got me feeling a type of way. The whole vibe of the album might as well have not even been the vibe because now I'm brought back to the reality with those last two songs. Yo, this album goes crazy, bro. This is it. This is exactly what I was hoping for. It was exactly what I was hoping for. But those last two songs, I wasn't hoping for them because I wasn't expecting to get them. So I was not ready. And I'm sure that that was the intention behind the way that they wrote the track. And that's the intention behind curating an album in a certain way, like like song by song. I feel like I've been brought down from the happiness that we were feeling. And I'm back to feeling like on my toes and tense. My first 21 Pilots album, yo.
the first one ever where I'm like, where I'm getting to experience with y'all. It feels like the entire album because of the last two songs was an entire dream sequence. Like it feels like it wasn't even, wasn't even what it was supposed to be. I was dreaming, I was vibing, I was happy where we're at. Boom, woke up into actual reality of where the state of living is at right now. I need to know what y'all are feeling about it because right now I'm feeling amazing about it. Out of 10, it's probably like an eight for me. I like the fact that they completely changed the sound from Trench, but those last two songs sounded like, it just, it's completely changed the view of the album for me yeah so your boy eight out of ten stamp it seal it it's official and let me know what y'all think i gotta know but i appreciate everybody being here especially if you made it this far this is going to be a longer album review since it's all in one sitting so if you got this far i really appreciate it follow me on all the socials if you want to hit up instagram you want to hit up twitter i'm active on both if you uh if you want to support the channel more so than just a like and a comment please do like and comment if you got this far it does help the channel and push the video out there and uh, if you wanna support more, you can do it either on Patreon or on Twitch, monetarily support. This is how I support myself and sustain life. People people are willing to donate so that way I can do this full time and entertain y'all guys and be as informative as I am, as fast as I am to these tracks. So if you wanna support, I would greatly appreciate it. But other than that, ladies and gentlemen, that brings us to the end of this video. And like I always say at the very end, go out there in the world, love and care for one another, love and care for each other. I'll catch everybody on the next video. Peace.